Item Number SCP-5726 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-5726 is to be kept cryogenically frozen in a high-security chamber within Site-19. In the event that SCP-5726 regains consciousness, MTF Row 36, Breacher's Pets, is to subdue the anomaly with minimal force. SCP-5726-1 is to be kept in storage at Site-19 under video supervision. Additionally, a GPS tracking device has been attached to SCP-5726-1. SCP-5726 is a sapient humanoid anomaly of unknown origins that strongly resembles and claims to be the fictional character Ichigo Nakamura from the sparkling magical girl Darling Pink franchise. The character appears in both a 500-chapter Japanese graphic novel series targeted at children between the ages of 7 and 12, as well as an animated series comprised of 200 episodes that aired from March 7, 2002 to February 8, 2007. A summary of media compiled by researcher Ito follows. Sparkling magical girl Darling Pink follows a 14-year-old middle school student named Ichigo Nakamura, who leads a double life as Darling Pink, a magical heroine who has been tasked with ridding the world of the evil forces of darkness. Nakamura encountered various antagonists who have been possessed by darkness, including bullies at school, unfair teachers, and local gang members. After defeating them in combat, Nakamura is able to free them from possession and befriend them on her quest to save the world through the power of love. SCP-5726 initially attracted Foundation scrutiny after a series of anomalous killings in Hida Takayama came to the attention of undercover operatives affiliated with MTF IOTA-10 damn feds, within the Gifu Prefecture Police Department. The anomaly was subsequently apprehended by MTF Pi-1 City Slickers, on August 9, 2018, shortly after the murder of three adolescent males. Force was not required. One eyewitness, 12-year-old Japanese male, was administered Class A amnestics following this incident. Despite its external physical resemblance to a human adolescent female, SCP-5726's biological makeup is only superficially analogous to that of a human. The subject lacks internal organs, blood, muscle tissue, and a central nervous system. Surgical analysis has indicated that SCP-5726's body is made up of multiple layers of a skin-colored, flesh-like substance that rapidly heals upon incision. Despite this, SCP-5726 still requires food and water, expresses pain, and is aware of basic human organs such as the stomach, brain, and heart. It is unknown how SCP-5726 processes nutrients and produces waste due to its lack of organs. SCP-5726 considers this the most important organ. SCP-5726 is able to generate pink explosive projectiles shaped like cartoon-style hearts from SCP-5726-1, a scepter that it is able to summon to itself while conscious. These projectiles vary in size and produce an exaggerated pop sound when created, followed by a sparkling effect upon detonation. The explosions produced by these bubbles are able to liquefy human flesh and cause significant structural damage. Addendum 5726.1 Initial Containment From August 9, 2018 to October 30, 2018, SCP-5726 was contained in a high-security humanoid containment cell with access to age-appropriate entertainment, not including sparkling magical girl Darling Pink and any related media. Its primary point of contact was senior researcher Kanako Nishigawa-Jones. SCP-5726 Initial Interview Log Interviewed SCP-5726 Interviewing Senior Researcher Kanako Nishigawa-Jones Forward Interview was conducted in Japanese. It was established during recovery that SCP-5726 
reacted negatively to his assigned number. Team leader Nishigawa Jones made the executive decision to refer to SCP-5726 by its apparent given name for the sake of improving compliance. Hi, Ichigo. How are you finding the facilities thus far? SCP-5726, looking somewhat uncomfortable. Well, um, they're okay, I guess. I don't understand why I'm here. It's not like I've done anything bad. Of course. Now, you can call me Kaneko, if you prefer. I just have a few questions for you to answer. You were fighting with some people when Officer Bravo found you. Why was that? Well, they… they were bullying this little kid. They wanted his money. One of them had a knife and… I only just got there, but I couldn't just let it happen, you see? Of course not. You were trying to be noble, is that right? SCP-5726 nods, frantically. What did you mean, when you said that you only just came here? I only just came to this world. It must have been for a reason, surely. Maybe someone tried to summon a great hero from another dimension. That's happened to me before, you know. Further investigation revealed that Chapter 212 of Sparkling Magical Girl Darling Pink involves a plotline where the protagonist is summoned to a dystopian alternate dimension where they do not exist. I see. So what do you intend to do in this world? Well, I don't really know yet. What I always do, I guess. I'm a magical girl, you see. I'm supposed to purify bad guys. Nishigawa Jones is silent. SCP-5726 clarifies. Uh, that means I hit them with the pretty purity heart bubbles and it cures them of the darkness hiding inside them and making them bad. Then usually we become friends. Pretty cool, right? That's very interesting, yes. Closing note. During the remainder of the interview time, SCP-5726 expressed a desire to leave containment and continue to purify bad guys, which it considered its prime duty as Darling Pink. A request was subsequently filed by researcher Kaneko Nishigawa Jones to appease SCP-5726 by allowing it supervised interactions with D-Class personnel in possession of criminal records. This was approved. SCP-5726 Security Footage 003 Participants SCP-5726 D-8972 Supervisor Junior Researcher Benedict Kim Board The below footage is from SCP-5726 first supervised interaction with a D-Class personnel. D-8972 was convicted in Australia of three counts of theft and the domestic abuse of his wife. SCP-5726 was informed of D-8972's criminal record by the supervising researcher. It should be noted that D-8972 did not speak Japanese, SCP-5726's primary language of communication. Stop! In the name of love and justice! D-8972 in English. Sorry, kid. I don't speak, uh, whatever you're speaking. It was wrong for you to do something like that to an innocent lady, and to take things from shops without paying. D-8972 turns away and knocks in the glass, attempting to attract Junior Researcher Kim's attention. D-8972 in English Hey, what the hell is this? I think you have the wrong guy. This kid doesn't speak English. Come on, pay attention. Oh no. This is kind of hard. I've never fought a bad guy who doesn't speak Japanese before. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. The purification should fix him anyways. SCP-5726, raising SCP-5726-1 Pretty pink purity hearts, go! A single heart-shaped projectile explosive emerges from the tip of SCP-5726 with a pop and floats toward D-8972. Upon hearing the sound, D-8972 turns around as the projectile makes contact with its base and detonates. The resulting explosion causes his head to explode. His decapitated body slumps to the ground. Blood spurts from the stump of his neck. It's all spurting out of him! Gross! There's so much of it! Hey, how do you feel? D-8972's corpse did not respond. SCP-5726 approaches the corpse and nudges it with its foot. In the observation booth, researcher Kim can be seen retching. 
I don't understand. Is it not all gone? Pretty pink purity hearts! Five more projectile explosives emerge from SCP-5726-1 and land on D-8972's unmoving body, where they detonate, reducing D-8972's body to a mixture of viscous red fluid and scraps of bone. SCP-5726 is unaffected by the resulting explosion. It bends down and dips its finger in the liquid, and then tastes it. Salty. The darkness sure is weird in this world. I hope he comes back soon. SCP-5726 Interview Log 037 Interviewed SCP-5726 Interviewing Senior Researcher Kaneko Nishigawa Jones Junior Researcher Benedict Kim Do you understand death, SCP-5726? No. What does that word mean? Killing is the act of causing death, especially deliberately. I know you don't mean to hurt the D-Class personnel, but the things that come out of them are blood, and sometimes their organs, all of which are necessary for sustaining human life. SCP-5726 looks at Researcher Nishigawa Jones with clear incomprehension. I'm sorry, Researcher Kaneko. Can you speak Japanese, please? I don't understand other languages. Researcher Kim to Nishigawa Jones in English. What is it saying? Researcher Nishigawa Jones in English. It doesn't understand the concept of death. Maybe it just can't. It's like its brain just isn't programmed to get it. SCP-5726 looks between Researcher Nishigawa Jones and Researcher Kim, apparently trying to follow the conversation. Is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Okay, well, if it's not too much trouble, I did have a question, Researcher Kaneko. Aren't there any other girls my age around here? I'm so bored of purifying people, and I don't understand how I'm supposed to be darling pink without any friends. I mean, I don't mean to offend you, Researcher Kaneko, because you've been so very kind to me, but it's just that… I understand, SCP-5726. You haven't offended me at all. I am a researcher, and there are certain limitations to my position, and I'm quite a bit older than you. It's natural for you not to think of us as friends, but I'm sorry. I wish I could help, but I don't think something like that would be approved. Why not? It's complicated. I'm very sorry. Everything's so complicated here. Everything made so much more sense back home. Can you elaborate on that? I just mean… I don't know. Purifying people here is fun, but it's so easy. None of them try to fight back. They just run. And it's cool to see the darkness, like, you know, physically coming out of them, because it's not strong enough to do that back home, so I really feel like I'm doing something here, you know? But they don't come back afterward. Why don't they come back? Where do you think they're going, SCP-5726? What? Have you considered the fact that they might not come back at all? I… I don't understand. That's wrong, Researcher Kaneko. They're all going to come back eventually. That's how it works. I see. Thank you for your time, SCP-5726. Could I ask you a favor, Researcher Kaneko? What is it? Well, it's just that… I can't remember all those numbers. And I like you and think we're friends. So could you just call me Ichigo? Of course, Ichigo. Closing note. Researcher Nishigawa Jones considered SCP-5726's acknowledgement that its victims did not come back after purification to be a breakthrough, though no further progress was made during this interview. Emails exchanged between B. Kim and K. Nishigawa Jones From B. Kim 092 at SkipNet, Junior Researcher Benedict Kim To K. Nishigawa Jones 001 at SkipNet, Senior Researcher Kaneko Nishigawa Jones Subject: SCP-5726's Containment Procedures Date, October 11, 2018 Senior Researcher Nishigawa Jones I am a bit concerned in regards to SCP-5726's moral compass. It has a very black and white sense of justice, one that can only come from an infantile understanding of good and evil. The fact that SCP-5726 fails to comprehend these complexities despite various attempts at teaching it otherwise worrying. 
What if it one day decides that we are the bad guys? You saw what it did to that poor D-Class. Sure, he was a scumbag, but he didn't deserve to be liquefied. I fear that the longer SCP-5726 stays under Foundation control, the higher chances there are of it seeing something which could convince it to oppose us. It is for this reason I would like to propose a change in its special containment procedures. Its unique anatomy poses some challenges for determining the safest possible method of containment. In particular, continuous deep sedation seems to be out due to SCP-5726's lack of a circulatory system. However, tests are revealing that it can survive extreme cold without external aid by entering a sort of hibernation. Cryoconservation seems like a potentially good option. What do you think? Regards, Junior Researcher Benedict Kim From K. Nishigawa Jones 001 at SkipNet, Senior Researcher Kaneko Nishigawa Jones to B. Kim 092 at SkipNet, Junior Researcher Benedict Kim Subject Reference SCP 5726's Containment Procedures Date October 11, 2018 Benedict I don't think there's much harm in giving Ichigo a chance. Yes, she exhibits violent behavior toward D Class personnel, but the fact that she doesn't understand what it's doing is a good sign, not a bad one. She's only ever harmed individuals that she knows to be bad guys, and she's convinced that we're the good guys. I'm aware that she is not the same as a normal child, but she certainly behaves like one. Perhaps she could be taught to do better, with proper guidance. She certainly seems to want to be good. She's not malicious, just confused, and we're making progress. It's slow going, but it's happened. Let's observe her for a little longer before doing anything rash. Go ahead and keep researching cryonics for now, but I'm reluctant to take the nuclear option before we absolutely have to. Best wishes, Kaneko. From B. Kim 092 at SkipNet, Junior Researcher Benedict Kim. To K. Nishigawa Jones 001 at SkipNet, Senior Researcher Kaneko Nishigawa Jones. Subject: SCP 5726's Containment Procedures. Date: October 11, 2018. Senior Researcher Nishigawa Jones. Forgive me if this is out of line, but I fear you are becoming too attached to SCP-5726. Perhaps we should seek a third party's opinion? Regards, Junior Researcher Bandit Kim From K. Nishigawa Jones 001 at SkipNet, SCP Researcher Kaneko Nishigawa Jones To B. Kim 092 at SkipNet, Junior Researcher Bandit Kim Subject, Reference SCP-5726 is containment procedures. Date: October 11, 2018. Benedict. Nonsense. SCP-5726 is a little girl, and the cold and sterile environment of the Foundation isn't good for growing children. I don't think a little humanity ever hurt the Foundation in its dealings with humanoids. Best wishes, Conico. Incident 5726-01. SCP-5726 Interview Log 049 Interviewed SCP-5726 Interviewing Senior Researcher Kaneko Nishigawa Jones Junior Researcher Benedict Kim Forward The excerpted section of Interview Log 049 is designated Incident 5726-01. Though SCP-5726's containment was ultimately not breached, the unexpected death of a researcher exposed critical weaknesses in SCP-5726's containment procedures. Researcher Nishigawa Jones, shuffling her notes. Very good, SCP-5726. I am pleased with your progress. That brings us to the end of our… Ow! Nishigawa Jones has a paper cut. A small quantity of blood is visible from the wound. Researcher Kim in English. Are you alright? Researcher Nishigawa Jones in English. Yes, just fine. A paper cut. SCP-5726 stares at Researcher Nishigawa Jones. It has gone very pale. It reaches out to touch Nishigawa Jones' bleeding finger, but stops just short of physical contact. No. No. It can't be. What's wrong? SCP-5726 stands up. 
the SCP-5726-1 scepter appears in its hand. In the distance, alarm bells begin to ring, as the teleportation of SCP-5726-1 has triggered an emergency alert to MTF Road 36, Breacher's Pets. Researcher Kim stands up and begins to back away slowly. SCP-5726 does not react to this. It is focused on researcher Nishigawa Jones, who has not yet moved. You! All this time you were… even though you were so kind to me, the darkness in this world, it really is powerful. I hate this place. Researcher Nishigawa Jones, who is paling. Don't, SCP-5726. Ichigo, please don't. It's okay, Researcher Kaneko. I'll purify you, and then we'll be friends for real. Do your best to come back soon, okay? Researcher Nishigawa Jones turns and sprints for the door. SCP-5726, raising SCP-5726-1. Pretty pink purity hearts! Three pink projectile explosives erupt from SCP-5726-1 with their characteristic pop. They make impact with the fleeing researcher Nishigawa Jones's back. The resulting explosion liquefies most of researcher Nishigawa Jones's body and destroys the doorframe. Blood coats the walls and floor of the meeting room, as well as SCP-5726 and researcher Benedict Kim, who has assumed a fetal position on the other side of the room. There is a long pause. Researcher Kim? Are you alright? Researcher Kaneko? She was corrupted but… Oh, come on now, Researcher Kim, don't be afraid. The darkness is gone. Researcher Kim, who does not speak Japanese, lifts his head and makes eye contact. He does not attempt communication. MTF Row 36, Breacher's pets arrive and knock open the containment chamber door. They apprehend SCP-5726, who does not resist. Researcher Kaneko's coming back any minute now. They always do. The MTF agents begin dragging SCP-5726 towards a cage bed, which has been brought into the chamber. Researcher Kim? Closing note, SCP-5726 was placed within the cage bed and became unresponsive for 12 hours. Subsequent to Incident 5726-01, an emergency joint meeting was subsequently held by the Ethics Committee and Containment Resources Committee in order to dictate the immediate future of SCP-5726's containment. Though SCP-5726's psychological welfare had improved significantly under the guidance of senior researcher Nishigawa Jones, it was determined that SCP-5726's unpredictable reactions made its continued consciousness an untenable long-term solution. Addendum 5726.2 Shift to Current Containment Procedures On February 21, 2019, an attempt was made to permanently place SCP-5726 in cryogenic storage. Junior researcher Benedict Kim was selected to replace senior researcher Kaneko Nishigawa Jones as SCP-5726's primary point of contact, and was instructed to persuade SCP-5726 to willingly enter the previously prepared cryostasis chamber. The following is an excerpt from Security Log 5726-302. Participant SCP-5726 Supervisor Junior Researcher Benedict Kim Forward Due to his inability to speak Japanese, Researcher Kim was provided with an instant translation module in order to facilitate communications. SCP-5726 had previously been informed that the cryostasis chamber was a new scientific innovation that had been crafted to amplify its powers and improve its ability to purify darkness. The following excerpt is taken from 23 minutes 34 seconds after SCP-5726 entered the cryostasis chamber. Begin Log how are you feeling? It's cold in here, and… small. It feels like the walls are closing in on me. Are you afraid of small places? No, of course not. Heroines aren't afraid of anything. That's good. I'm sure that they aren't. But if you were afraid, you could close your eyes. That way, you wouldn't be able to see the walls. After a moment's hesitation, 
SCP-5726 closes its eyes. I'm not afraid, just resting my eyes for a little. Of course. You had a difficult day yesterday. You should take a nap while the process finishes. You won't leave me while I'm not looking, right? Don't go anywhere. Just stay here. I'll stay, for as long as you need. I will do what is necessary. SCP-5726 and Researcher Kim are silent for 30 seconds. Researcher Kim? I think I know what death is now. Oh? It's what I did to Researcher Kaneko. She's not coming back, is she? No. Death is something only the darkness would do. SCP-5726 begins visibly trembling. Maybe where you came from. Here. It's just part of life. The darkness here is strong. But I can't be defeated. When this is done, I'm going to beat the darkness and make sure no one dies again. Didn't we say you were going to nap? SCP-5726 and Researcher Kim are silent for 50 seconds. It's cold in here. I know. SCP-5726 and Researcher Kim are silent for 58 seconds. R researcher K Kim? Yes. SCP-5726 is silent for 15 seconds. I'm sorry for, for kick. SCP-5726 becomes unresponsive. Rest now, Ichigo. Everything will be okay. End log.